Are you tired of Excel charts that look like this? What if I told you that a single epic Excel formula can help you to create a chart that looks just like this? That's what we're going to look at, guys, in the next five or 10 minutes. But if we're meeting for the first time, I'm Chris Mortimer. I'm an Excel content creator, real world consultant and lecturer. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. Before we get into this epic formula, let me tell you about my Excel cheat sheet. Yes, I've boiled it down, everything you need to know in Excel to the 21 formulae, 13 techniques that you need to know. This is a free downloadable one page PDF. It's gonna get you on your, the right track with your Excel learning. Go ahead, click it in the description, download it now. It is absolutely free. So with that said, let's get into our demonstration. Make sure you download the download file and work along with me. So this is what we're working towards. And let's just make a couple of notes here, things we need to understand. We've got what we'd call a continuous data set. Let's delete this chart now. We've got a continuous data set. So it's a numerical data set. There's lots of values and you can see none of the values really repeat. So it's what we'd call continuous data. Now, what I love about this formula is it gives us a concept of bins. Yes, bins, perhaps you wanna throw your laptop into the bin when you're trying to do this type of analysis. I don't know, but bins really help us because we can see with this formula, this bin is less than 10. It tells us three values less than 10. This bin is more than 60, less than 70. We can see 733, 31 values there. And then we carry on with the bin. So this is how the formula works. We create the bins, then we slot the values into the bins and the formula counts how many values are in each bin. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the frequency formula. The frequency formula, I use it all the time in my data analysis. I'm always surprised how few people use it. Let's put it together right now. So let's do some basic data analysis first. There's some things we need to know. Firstly, the number of values in the data set. How might you find out that out? You could use a count a formula. I'm gonna go control shift down. I can see at the bottom of Excel here, we've got a value of 5,000. I'm gonna go ahead and just tie that in at the top. So I know how many values are in the data set. Next, we need to know the maximum value. So let's go ahead and do that. Max formula, navigating to the cell, control shift down and enter. And I can see we've got a max of 158 and then we need the minimum value as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, put the min formula in and we can see we've got our maximum and minimum values in there. Now that's useful for us because we need to know the range of values, the range of values in the data set, that's gonna help us to define our bins. So those bins, we need to say this bin starts here and ends there for all of the bins. Let's go ahead and do that. My, my data has a minimum value of seven, a maximum value of 158. So what about bins in intervals of 10 between zero and 160? That should encompass all the data and spread it out nicely for a nice analysis as we're gonna see. So I'm gonna start with 10 here. Now these values, they become upper bounds. And you can see in this cell, I've just got a formula in there. This cell, it's gonna tell us what are called implied ranges. We'll get to those in just a second. So I'm gonna take the cell above and plus 10 to it and then control D on the Windows PC, auto fill that down, and that's gonna take me to 160. So this range, you can see, encompasses the whole data set. So those implied ranges, how is the frequency formula gonna work? It's gonna take the value on the row, in this case, 20, and the value in the row above, assuming it's not on the top row, and make what we call an implied range. So you can see values more than 10, and less than or equal to 20 are going to fit into this row. This is the power of the frequency formula. Are you ready? Are you ready to put it together? Let's go to full screen for this. So with frequency, it's a little bit complicated. We have to do it step by step. Step one, we select all of the cells that we want the frequency formula to go into. So shift and down arrow, all of those cells are selected. Then steady and systematic, we can go ahead and start building the frequency formula. I type in the first two letters on the Windows PC, hit the tab key and the formula goes in and we can see what Excel is asking for. Yes, just two things, only two things Excel needs. It needs a data array and a bins array. So the data array Excel is saying, where is the data that you want me to analyze? Once again, using the keyboard, control shift and down and F4. 
F4 is important. We've got the dollar signs in there. It has to be an absolute reference. So we're saying to Excel, go and look at that data, do the innate data analysis over there. Then comma, I can see the next component of the formula highlighted, the bins array. So what's going on here? Well, we know the concept of bins. We're gonna go ahead and select our values. Now note at this point, I haven't selected column F. I haven't selected the implied ranges as I've written them out while well, using a formula in text. I've selected the values. Once again, absolutely important to have the F4 key, hit the F4 key, put those absolute references in. If you don't have absolute references, this formula is not going to work. And then we close the bracket, steady and systematic. Don't hit enter. Don't hit enter yet. We're working through this steady and systematically. Now, control shift. So you've got to hold down the control shift key, holding down control shift, and then hitting enter, control shift and enter. I can see the frequency formula has gone in there. So did you get it working? Did you get it working for you? If you didn't get it working, you've got to delete all of the frequency formula and then go back through the video step by step. It's difficult to learn, but once you learn it, it's a game changer. I use it all the time in my data analysis. I know you're going to absolutely love it too. How might we validate what's happened here? Well, we know we've got 5,000 values in the data set. So if the formula has worked, then how many values should we have in the, this column? Remember, this column, for example, is telling me here there's 630 values between more than 30 and less than or equal to 40. How might we validate that? Well, if we add up that column, alt and plus, it should, up, should add up to what? Yes, it should add up to 5,000. I can see we've got 5,000 there. I'm even going to go ahead and do a special check here. You don't have to do this, but just to validate what's going on, I've just deleted all the data. What if I put a value of 100 in there? I can see uh, 100 is going to appear. At 100 is 100 is outside the range. So I'm going to put a value of 10 here, and we can see that 10 has appeared in the first row. Let's go ahead and put a value of 56 in. 56 is more than 50 and less than 60. What if we put a value of 60 in? Let's understand what's going on on those boundaries. 60 has gone in. Less than or equal to 60 is going to go into this row. But if I say 61, where's that going to go? That's going to go into this row. So just take the time, put some values in, get to know and get to trust the frequency formula undoing this, Control Z, and we're back to where we were. But we want to do more than that, don't we? We want to get to a nice chart, something like this. Let's go ahead and try to do it. So we can select this data. And because of the setup we've got, it lends itself very nicely to creating a chart. Insert and then column chart. I'm going to go for column chart. And there we go. We have our data charted there. So that's the frequency formula. What about that chart? I think that looks pretty cool. With just a little bit of formatting, you can make the chart look even better, something like this. This is the power of the frequency formula. Hope you enjoyed that one. Make sure you go and down, download your Excel cheat sheet if you like this kind of thing. We've got 21 Excel formula, the 13 techniques that you need to know to push forward your Excel learning. I'll see you in the next video.